Well well well. Look what the cat drugged in. Ha ha ha. I'm just joking. Go sit your ass down and let a homie tell you a tale. A tale coming straight from the west side. Los Angeles. Tonight we are taking a look at the most infamous and controversial record label in history. Death Row Records. In the book Labyrinth written by Randall Sullivan. We are introduced to a world of money greed music gangs and a lot of other gangster shit in 90s Los Angeles. So sit back relax and enjoy this hip hop gangster tale. If you want to purchase this audiobook go to Audible to purchase. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button my reading rainbow children. What's up y'all? It's your boy Charles. Charles on this world checking in. Listen, we checking out the book called Labyrinth by Randall Sullivan. It's about the the uh deletion of Tupac and Biggie. The whole breakdown of the case, man. Let's go ahead and get into it. I'm gonna come back with my thumbs come back with my reaction. Hit that thumbs up button. Lower by illustrating editor Rick Barz' column with the drawing of Amir Muhammad being lynched by two white male reporters. The most predictable and audacious comments on the Mac Muhammad theory came from Suge Knight's latest attorney, Robin J. Yannis. This whole idea had come and gone a year ago, Yannis said, and was being recycled by the LAPD to cover their butts. Yannis then said, Suge doesn't know David Mack. Suge most certainly did, however, as more than one witness already had told the LAPD. For Russell Poole, the media fiasco that had ensued following the publication of the Chuck Phillips article was perhaps even more disillusioning than what he had witnessed as a member of the LAPD. It was like the cover-up had been covered up, this time by the media, Poole explained. When one took a close look at what actually was said in the avalanche of articles that castigated the Los Angeles Times for its original story on the Mac Muhammad theory, they boiled down to this. Amir Muhammad could not be a murderer because he was a mortgage broker. David Mack had been cleared as a suspect in the murder of Biggie Smalls because the LAPD said it wasn't investigating that possibility, and the only reason these two had been singled out for mention was that they were black. The Los Angeles Times' credibility was out the window as far as I'm concerned, Poole said, and this Rick Barr's guy at the New Times, what a stupid shit. None of these papers, not even the Times, did any probing whatever. They didn't ask the right questions, so how could they get the right answers? The idea that Amir Muhammad must be innocent because he was a mortgage broker especially infuriated Poole. Back in 1994, the detective had arrested a mortgage broker named Willie Darnell Hankins for shooting a man to death in an office on Wilshire Boulevard. During the course of an investigation that involved the subsequent murder of the accused man's father, Willie Hankins, whose real estate loan business had made him one of the wealthiest men ever to emerge from the south-central Los Angeles ghetto. Poole was astounded by how skilled these guys were at manipulating and covering up in financial deals. Working as a mortgage broker is a perfect way to make dirty money look clean, he explained, and that's what a lot of them do. He had heard a number of stories back then, Poole recalled, about mortgage brokers who were helping gangster rappers and other members of the Bloods gang launder the money they made from drug and weapons transactions. Poole also recalled that the investigations of Kevin Gaines and Rafael Perez had shown that both men boasted about the large real estate portfolios they were able to accumulate. I realized that there might have been a connection there to Harry Billups, or Amir Muhammad, or whatever he calls himself. Poole said. For me, the fact that he's a mortgage broker only raises a lot of new questions. It was really painful to find out that not only the LAPD, but also the Los Angeles Times, doesn't want those questions answered. The Los Angeles Times had been serving for months as the principal publicist for the accusations of Rafael Perez. The story that Perez had made a deal and was talking to the cops became public on September 16, 1999, one day after Bernard Parks held a news conference to announce that a total of 12 LAPD officers already had been relieved of duty on the basis of what Perez said. 
Nino Durden was the only one named. It's not a good day, said Parks, who only a few hours earlier had handed out 18 Medal of Valor awards to employees of the police department. For the Times, the most important revelation to emerge was bannered across page one of the paper's metro section. Ex-officer says he shot unarmed man. Prosecutors at that moment were attempting to have Javier Ovando released from state prison, the Times informed its readers. The headline on the story in the next day's edition of the Times announced that Perez had implicated another officer in a second shooting as corruption probe widens. Even at this early stage, the newspaper reported, the probe had become the most extensive inquiry into LAPD conduct since the 1930s. LAPD corruption probe may be test for city leaders, read the headline on the Times' next article. Already the paper was framing the story in the context of the Rodney King beating, the brutalization of minority victims by blue-suited brutes, and a police department that required the oversight of civil rights activists to protect them. The Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office announced that day that it was suspending enforcement of its anti-gang injunctions against more than 100 members of the 18th Street Gang. The day after that, the Times published a lengthy interview with Rafael Perez under the headline, Ex-Officer Calls Corruption a Chronic Cancer. What he had done to Javier Ovando haunted him even in his dreams, Perez told the paper. I go to sleep with it and wake up with it. It's something I have been living with for almost three years, and I wanted to find some closure for me, and in a sense, a beginning for Mr. Ovando. This is something that I'm doing for me and for my God, and something that I need to do to make me whole. Bernard Parks addressed the Los Angeles City Council the next day and told them that many more officers than the 12 already suspended would be subject to investigation. We take Rafael Perez at his word, said the chief whose admission that we may end up with a lot of information we can't prove seemed to slip past the ears of most listeners. Horrifying, the council's most left-wing member, Jackie Goldberg, called the contents of the chief's briefing. We're not going to put blinders on to these allegations, an anonymous official of the U.S. Justice Department advised the Times, which reminded readers that federal officials have been monitoring the LAPD for the last several years. A week later, attorneys for Javier Ovando's two-year-old daughter, Destiny, filed a $20 million claim against the city of Los Angeles. On and on it went, for weeks and then months. No one watched with more dismay than Russell Poole. Ray Perez, one of the dirtiest cops in the history of the Los Angeles Police Department, was playing puppet master to the whole city. The politicians and the media not only didn't question Perez... They used what he said in every way they could to destroy the LAPD, Poole lamented. The public parsing of Perez's confessions had become a kind of cottage industry for the political left in Los Angeles. The LA Weekly and New Times published story after story that attacked both the officers and the administration of the LAPD, while at the same time celebrating the murderers, drug dealers, and thieves who had become the official victims of the police abuse attested to by Rafael Perez. How many innocent people are imprisoned because of false testimony by Los Angeles police officers? asked USC law professor Erwin Chemerinsky in the first sentence of a commentary published by the Los Angeles Times in December 1999. The answer was that there was no way of knowing, since the only LAPD officer proven to have perjured himself in court was Rafael Perez, upon whose allegations Chemerinsky's question was based. An independent task force needs to be created immediately to ensure unbiased review of all the possibly tainted cases. Hit the thumbs up button, guys. Hit the thumbs up button. Let's continue on. Chemerinsky asserted later in his commentary, This task force should be composed of prosecutors, defense attorneys, and others with experience in the criminal justice system. In other words, people such as himself. Ramona Ripston, the executive director of the American Civil Liberties Union of Southern California, also cited the allegations of Rafael Perez in the commentary she wrote for the Times, asserting that, because of them, long-standing claims that such abuses exist beyond Rampart are increasingly plausible. Ripston proposed creating the position of permanent prosecutor to investigate and prosecute police misconduct a kind of in-house Kenneth Starr who would not only usurp the authority of the district attorney's office, but create a new bureaucratic bailiwick as well. 
One subject Ripston didn't want to discuss was her close friendship with Nick Salikos, the LAPD captain who had been running the Rampart Division when most of the corruption alleged by Rafael Perez occurred. No one took better advantage of the Rampart scandal than Tom Hayden, who was regularly using the op-ed Looking for a professional photographer for your next big event? Need video of your special day? Then look no further, for $100 an hour have a professional photographer or videographer, shoot your wedding, birthday party, quinceanera bar mitzvah or bat mitzvah, anniversary party or whatever your special occasion may be. Highlight your event with professional, crisp, photos and video. Check out Charles Arnes Photography on Instagram as well as book us for your next event. Must live in the Southern California area. Pages of the Times, as well as the TV appearances they generated, to become the public face of advocacy on behalf of Javier Ovando and other members of the 18th Street Gang who had been victimized by the LAPD. Mm. Hayden was not an opportunist, of course, but an idealist, as he'd been demonstrating ever since he had used his movie star wife's money to win election to the California State Senate almost two decades earlier. Term limits were about to force Hayden to give up his Senate seat, however, and since he had no chance of prevailing in a statewide election, his only hope for a continuing political career was to win a seat on the Los Angeles City Council. Like virtually everyone involved in local politics, Hayden was aware that minorities were becoming a majority both in Los Angeles and all across California. Hispanics had outnumbered non-Hispanic whites in L.A. since 1990, and the disparity was mounting day by day. White people now were less than 50% of the population statewide as well, and with skin as pale as Tom Hayden's or James Hahn's, a politician needed a very broad ethnic base to win public office. The Hispanic citizens of the Rampart District, however, didn't seem to understand that they were supposed to be more afraid of police officers than of gang members. Polls consistently demonstrated the depth of support for the police in Hispanic communities. Almost immediately after Rafael Perez's allegations were published in the Los Angeles Times, local citizens staged a well-attended and wildly enthusiastic pro-Rampart division rally outside their LAPD station. Anyway, y'all, that is Labyrinth by Randall Sullivan, man. This is a really good audio book. Y'all can check it out on Audible or Spotify. Um, it gets deep. It's it's crazy how corruption, corruption in, in LAPD. But, you know, the LAPD, Chicago, it's another corrupt New York. A lot of times those big cities, Philadelphia, a lot of, these, a lot of times big cities like that, always have corruption corruption involved. Then you got states like Florida, which used to really didn't be corrupt, but now it is, I guess, with Santos. Um, I don't know, man. I think college, politics has always been tainted, corrupt, all throughout history. That's what I always think about politics. But it's crazy how politics was used to kind of cover up the Biggie Smalls investigation. Interesting. Anyway, what do y'all think about this book, Labyrinth, man? Leave your comments and subscribe to Charles and Israel. Hit the thumbs up button. Appreciate it. For more of these fascinating stories and true crimes, subscribe to Charles Arnest World. Thanks for watching.